Welcome to Youngstown, Ohio, as we find ourselves here today for my 38th stadium review episode and the fifth on my quest to hit all 16 USHL stadiums, as we're at the Covelli Center to see the Youngstown Phantoms, which is brought to you in partnership with Pull Tab Sports. Check out all their content on Midwest sports and culture at PullTabSports.com, and be sure to throw them a follow on all their social media accounts. All right, let's get into it. So we headed into Youngstown for today on the east side of Ohio. In this trip, we saw three hockey games in three days. It was an absolute blast. As someone that grew up in Ohio, Youngstown's a city that always gets a bad rap. But driving through, I really didn't spot any problems besides the roads being really awful. The downtown area looked all right, but just nothing really going on. And the arena was just off of the downtown area a little bit. The stadium opened up in 2005, which was mostly thanks to a large redevelopment grant that was secured by a local state congressman. It was originally named the Convocation Center, but that name only lasted a few weeks as GM then renamed it to the Chevrolet Center. And then in 2009, it was renamed to the Cavelli Center after a local businessman who owns many restaurants around the area. The Phantoms then moved in in 2009, and that was the same year that they joined the USHL, as prior to that, they were in the NAHL. This was the first time in a USHL game that has actually charged for parking, as they charged just $10 there. But the parking was actually extremely efficient getting both in and out. That's something that I never really comment on, but it was so uniquely good that I felt like I had to comment on it. From the outside of the stadium, this actually looked like a stadium. As all the other stadiums have been to so far, it's always been kind of a more community barn arena style. But after seeing the really nice and crisp metal exterior, and also the super nice entryway with the rounded glass, I was stoked and ready to enter. However, the outside of the arena was kind of where the high praise stopped. Entering the concourse, you're actually at the ice level, and everything in the concourse seemed really old and outdated. Now, I was absolutely shocked that this building was built in 2005, because to me, especially in the concourse, it felt like this could have been built in the 70s or the 80s. I'll give them credit, because they did try to spruce it up some with some fake bricks around some of the pillars, which actually looked pretty nice. But besides that, there wasn't too much noteworthy. We headed to the shop to get a puck, and they only had these mystery sign player pucks. Not any regular pucks, which I was a little bummed at initially, but I thought this was a super cool idea. Alright. Number 16, Burner. Who's this guy? Oh, it's authentic. Justin Burner. At a boy, Vinesy. There were several food stands around the arena that were actually closed. And in one of the corners, behind a few dividers, I found this huge collection of old food and kitchen materials as this wasn't a good look at all, as you could tell that a lot of stuff here just wasn't upkept well at all and just kind of disregarded. They had your typical stadium food, and so I tried a pretzel, which is pretty good. And later on, we got these fried mac and cheese bites, which were all right, they're a little cold in the center, but nothing too horrible. And now for everyone's favorite part, let's rank the hot dog. So for starters, the dog was $4.75. I was like, hey, it's less than $5, but it's kind of a little bit of a mind trick because it's only a quarter less than five bucks. And it was also a little thin, so we're gonna get a two out of five for price. Now onto the presentation. It came in this bag that was super unique and kind of cute. It said hot dog on it, let you know where you're eating, and let's open it up. And we have our first occurrence of grill marks. I was absolutely buzzing over those grill marks because it's the first one we've had. So, gotta give credit where credit is due, 4 out of 5 for presentation. But, let's get into it and see how she actually tastes. The bun was actually pretty warm and fluffy, so we're gonna give it 4 out of 5. How's it dog? And for the dog, the meat itself, the grill marks actually added a lot of flavor, and it was a pretty good dog, so 4 out of 5 once again. So this is gonna give us a final score of 7 out of 10. So let's check this out on the leaderboard so far. And this lands it tied with top spots with the Cedar Rapids Rough Riders. However, I'm gonna give the Riders the top spot because I think theirs was a little better. To make this one better, I think either a larger dog or pricing at 375 because I felt like I could down a few of these pretty easily. 
Let's take a look around the arena at the seating. So I went with tradition and got the cheapest seats in the arena, which were behind the shoot twice net and cost $13. However, unfortunately they do their tickets through the monopoly that is Ticketmaster, so with all the fees and stuff, they came out to $18.25 per ticket, which is actually the highest, cheapest ticket price that we've had so far. And once again, like the concourse, this is just not well maintained and well taken care of. The fact that this arena is less than 20 years old is absolutely ridiculous for the way that it looks. The stands are laid out as one giant bowl, and they do have some little private party areas in the corners, and also lots of suites lining the sides of the rink. I found it pretty odd that the commentator's booth was also shoved up in one of the corners. However, the far end of the ice from where we were at the shoot once end is completely tarped off, and there's actually no way to access that from the concourse level. And you notice that they don't have a center hanging scoreboard, but rather two scoreboards in the middle of the ice on the sides of the rink. And it was really weird because they had these giant spotlights that were close to the scoreboard, and they would just send off a bright flash at random times. It was kind of distracting and really odd, I don't understand what that's about. Before the game, I also stumbled upon the accessibility seating. And since the concourse is at ice level, you don't really have much of a choice but to put this also at ice level. And speaking of ice level in the rink itself, there were definitely some oddities. The glass around the rink had a ton of chips in it, and had so many marks that weren't cleared off ever. And I've never seen this before, but before the game started, they had a guy going around with a giant pole moving the laths that hold the pieces of glass together back into place, as apparently they slide out of place as they get hit with pucks and warm-ups, but this just seemed like a really sketchy practice. On the contrary, I do always enjoy these old-fashioned goal judge boxes. The bench areas don't have any tunnels leading towards them, and the locker rooms are at the end of the rink, so the coaches have to waddle across the ice to get to the benches. And speaking of the benches, I noticed that the ads right at the benches were completely torn apart by skates, as there were also several other ads around the rink that were peeling and weren't fixed as well as some really wonky spots in the glass. And I know I've said a lot of negative things about this ring so far, and I typically don't do that, and I try to stay away from the negatives, but it's hard not to point these out here. So I'm sorry to the Youngstown Phantoms and the Covelli Center and the people of Youngstown if it seems like I'm bashing your ring. But this situation does raise a lot of questions for me. As one of the team's owners is the owner of Phantom Fireworks, and if you've ever driven around in the Midwest, you see a billion of their signs, especially around the 4th of July, so you know that they're actually making some pretty good money. The rink itself is owned by the city of Youngstown, but if that's your owner, you'd think that he'd be putting some money into the rink as well. But that just doesn't seem like the case, as this rink is not well maintained, not well taken care of, and everything seems really out of date. And also, I found a quote from Sam Cavelli, the guy that owns the naming rights to the arena. And after he bought those rights in 2009, he said, We'll do whatever it takes to promote the center. We believe in it. Safe to say that actions speak louder than words in this case, as this is not what we're seeing. As the arena holds a capacity of 5,717 for hockey games, but the night that we were there, there was only attendance of 1,339, which seems rather generous for how many butts were actually in seats. However, it is true that Youngstown has lost 30% of its population in the last 30 years. So my big question is, what does the future hold for the Cavelli Center in the Youngstown Phantoms? What they're doing now doesn't seem sustainable. Okay, well, I'm sorry I had to do that, and that's the first time I've ever kind of went on a rant like that during a stadium review episode, but I feel to accurately review something, you have to be upfront and honest about the situation and not try to sugarcoat anything. But the good news is, now we get to talk atmosphere, the fun part of being at a game. You gotta love all that smoke billowing out from some ghostly apparition. Youngstown jumped out to a lead early, playing some great hockey, and I was wrong on that goal, my dude Varner didn't get the tip. 
and have a listen to this fantastic ad placement. As when a visiting team gets a penalty and the Phantoms go on the power play, it's sponsored by a hotel, and they say enjoy your stay in the penalty box. Two minutes for interference at 7.06 of the first period. That's Walter, two minutes for interference. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> But our boy Varner had to cut the ad read short by putting one in the back of the net. A great first period from the Phantoms as they went into the first intermission up 4-1. to one. For the first intermission, they had people running on the ice chasing after a giant ball and have a look at this guy carrying the kid and the kid swinging his legs kicking the whole time. This kid, 100%, has to be my fan of the game. The traditional second period section hop started out with some pretty cheap ciders. Definitely appreciate that. As we took in the view from one of the open corners and stood there for some of the period. However, a little later on, we were actually kicked out and said we couldn't stand there. Oh well. Now we're good. I got my drink. Oh, there's some bad bounces here. A ridiculous amount of scuffs. Yeah. Oh! oh! That's also where I witnessed one of the nastiest hockey injuries I've ever seen. I'm not going to show this all, but it was a nasty situation. And they really struggled cleaning it all up. The mascot Sparky was out and about, and they had a big drum going. Although people weren't very good at following the beat. Are you ready to rumble? And we also had some fantastic last names of this game. The game finished with a final score of 6-3 in favor of the Phantoms, capping off the victory with an empty net goal. And something I always talk about is when the players stick around to appreciate the fans and acknowledge their support, which the Phantoms did, followed by one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. All the fans moved down close to the glass, and the team did a full lap of the arena stick tapping on the glass for the fans. Which I absolutely loved. Fantastic gesture, and I wish we saw more of this across hockey. Down here! And that does it for us in Youngstown, Ohio. Be sure to hit subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Once again, sorry about the rant and kind of going off on the Phantom's owners and operations. But I'm not one to sugarcoat things, and I'm going to call something out if I see something wrong. With that being said, though, I obviously had a fantastic time of the game and really enjoyed myself. And we do have one more USHL review left for this season. I will see you again very soon in that video. Thanks. Bye.